He has heard the words, yes, I once heard before. Their lives are not less, nor ours worth any more. He means to stop the killing. He stands on that demand. Now there's blood on the track. There's blood on your hand. Engineer, engineer, how did it feel when the legs of a man snap beneath the wheel of your unloaded train bearing down the track? Well, they're not freedom fighters. They're not attacking military targets. They're very much of a brutal band of thugs and terrorists. And also make no doubt about the fact that our U.S. President, most of the U.S. Congress, and too many American people support this process. We have to go back and we have to convince them of the reality of what's going on in Nicaragua. Queremos pues de que ustedes vayan a decir la realidad de que están viendo, de que tanta madre que vemos aquí decaído. Madre que tenemos a nuestros hijos en la frente de guerra, que no sabemos si van a regresar vivos that they were under the domination of Somoza for 43 years. People forget that. And after these 43 years of an amazing amount of tolerating suffering and being abused and having no services, they won their revolution. We were telling the world that in less than a year from our victory, we were already eradicating practically illiteracy in this country. We were telling the world that although we had no money to build houses, we were giving people a piece of land and having them create and find any possible way to make something that it looks horrible, but it's their own. We were giving people back the right to produce their own housing, to produce their own education, to produce their own health without really needing the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank and all the financing and so on and so forth. That's what we were doing. So what would be the reaction of the U.S. administration before this little tiny country with less than three million people that had always been very submissive and all of the sudden they decided they can think, they can decide, they can plan, they can establish their own relations and they are not even asking us for permission. That's very dangerous. Because the Contra don't want any type of governmental project to succeed in the countryside. The, the, the Contra don't want any type of influence from the government to be in the countryside. So therefore, if someone comes to establish a project of development in the countryside, they're going to kill them. And that's been well documented. And that, of course, I've, I've heard and seen too many instances now of development workers, teachers, healthcare workers, uh, cooperative advisors, agricultural workers, nutritionists, anybody that is doing development work in the countryside has been targeted by the country and directly assassinated. We are in the northern area of Region 6, which is north of Montegalpa in an area called El Qua Bokai. It has some fame because El Qua is where Ben Linder put his hydroelectric plant and San Jose de Bokai is where he was assassinated by the Contras. And when I say assassinated, I mean that I saw pictures of his body shortly after his death, and he was shot in the temple at very close range. It's very evident that this was a very deliberate attempt to kill a North American and to scare Americans off from working in this area. As veterans, as a member of the veterans group, one of the coordinators of the Veterans Peace Action Team, we decided as a unit that bringing veterans down to work in the war zone would be an impact on the veterans that went back and on the ones that were here in an attempt to spread the word of the reality of the war. And one of the realities is that there is no support for the Contras. They do not win the hearts and minds of the people. They destroy the legs and the arms of the people. This is the fourth year that health professionals, as part of the National Central American Health Rights Network, have investigated specific reports of abuses of medical neutrality by the Contra. The most recent attack against the health center occurred only three weeks ago in Cerro, Colorado. On October 20th, 1987, early in the morning, a group of Contra came into the community. They stole the alimentation milk, the milk from the childhood alimentation and pregnant woman alimentation program. 
They stole the medicines from the clinic. <clears throat> they then placed two mines, one in each corner of the clinic, attached them both together with wire, ran a wire out the front door, attached it to a battery, and blew the clinic completely apart. Normally, guerrilla organizations attack legitimate military targets. That is the usual modus operandi of the guerrilla groups. But what separates the Contras from these other groups is that civilians in Nicaragua are not incidental targets, but are primary targets. Uh, the Contras do attack civilian targets, and they attack civilian targets routinely, and they attack civilian targets as a general concerted policy. Uh, within a month after I got here, there were a number of attacks around Esteli itself. One was an attack on a farmer's truck in which uh, two people were machine gunned to death and their bodies were then doused with gasoline and burned. And one of my first experiences in the hospital was seeing the charred remains of a campesino and his son. That civilian targets are one of the main aspects, one of the main philosophies of the Contra War. Well, just to give you a very clear example, which only happened four days ago, and a civilian bus was travelling north and a few kilometres outside Esteli with 60 civilians. As far as I know, there was not one military person in that bus and it was attacked and sprayed at random by the counter-revolution. It was a bus of passengers and it was only carrying uh, civilians. And one of them was Maria Josefa Talavera, 52 years old, who died yesterday at the centre because of the of a brain hemorrhage, according to one of the doctors. So obviously what we want to try and do is obtain corroborated, clear statements about this and present that to the American public to demonstrate to the American public that this is what their money is being used for. The American people, you know, throughout the country, are basically good-hearted people. And I think it's evident in a lot of ways that they respond to personal interest stories in the media and they send checks and donations to people that need transplants and this and that. I mean, you know, they, they, they believe in a certain value system that I, think is, that I think is good, you know, and I believe in it too. And I think that if, if they knew what we're doing here, if they knew what this war was about, how would they put up with it? How would they put up with a war where the United States directs a group of mercenaries, essentially, supplied, trained, directed by the CIA to attack cooperatives that have women and children in it, to blow up health posts, to kill teachers, to kill administrators, to kill civilians, as routine policy. And that's been going on in this country for six years, and the United States doesn't know about it. Although the U.S. press is not a direct instrument of our government, the U.S. press is often critical of our government in many ways, the U.S. press does not, frankly, take an opposition stance to policies of the United States government. And this is a policy of the United States government. So the U.S. press can hit on it on the edges, but they don't straightforward say, this is the policy, this is what's happening, women and children are being killed. If you talk to reporters, they'll say, well, look, that's a good story, but my editor's not interested in that. And people are very concerned about what their, their editors and their bosses are thinking. It's so controversial that people are, are not going to just dedicate a whole story to something like this while they should. They had an obligation to do that, but we all know why they don't. Who do you work for? I work for NBC Radio. Thank you. Thank you. A train can stop most any man ten tons of hate that came. It mangled his body. Death was its aim. But the wounded lion will rise again, he makes a mighty roar. Brian's coming back, he's coming back for more. Engineer, engineer, how did it feel when the legs of a man snapped beneath the wheel of your bomb-loaded train heading down the track? You cut Brian down, but Brian's coming down. Brian, he has heard the words, yes, I once heard before. Their lives are not less, nor ours worth any more. He means to stop the killing, he stands on that demand. Now there's blood on the track, there's blood on your hand. Engineer, engineer, how did it 
feel when the legs of a man snap beneath the wheel of your unloaded train, bearing down the track you cut right in them. But Brian's coming back. Nicaragua, little flower, how can you stand the pain of the death and the terror? It's all aboard the train. The Yankee boat is heavy, it comes down hard on you, but the little flower has a way of always coming through. Engineer, engineer, how did it feel when the legs of the man snapped beneath the wheel of your unloaded train, bearing down the track you cut right and down. Brian's coming back. A train can stop most any man. Ten tons of hate that came. It mangled his body. Death was its name. But the wounded lion will rise again. He makes a mighty roar. Brian's coming back. He's coming back for more. Can you sing that with me? Brian's coming back, he's coming back for more. Brian's coming back, he's coming back for more. Brian's coming back, he's coming back for more. Brian's coming back, he's coming back for You can see all kinds of burned cooperatives in this area, she mentioned. Well, who lives in cooperatives? Families. Who lives in cooperatives? Women, children, men. Those are communities. And they're attacked, and they're attacked on a regular basis. Very good friend of mine just died last week. Uh, full support of his mother, four kids, old, old father. We're down a cooperative. Yeah. Tanto jóvenes en la colina que están mutilados de sus camillas, de sus dos brazos, por quién, por Rila. So many people, so many young people who've been disabled. And by whom? By Reagan. Um, landmines are also very common. It's very difficult to detect because I don't see them. They say they're plastic and they're very small, but they're very small. They're very hard to detect because they're, they're plastic. Detect. And usually, usually what kind of injury do they result in? The foot or a Depends. If they use a bota, the amputation is here. If people, you that persona. Okay, if the person who gets hit by the mine uses a, has boots on, then the amputation is here. If they're barefoot, the amputation is here. Normalmente el soldado tiene amputación aquí. And usually the soldiers have this glove in the amputation. Pero el civil tiene amputación aquí. But the civilians have the glove in the amputation. Estaba este en el ejército popular sandinista. Andamos cumpliendo una misión y íbamos caminando y íbamos explorando, iba explorando el camino cuando este la guardia, la guardia somosito había puesto varias minas para cuando pasara el ejército allí cayeron. Uh -huh. y yo voy caminando y... estaba caminando sí. solo iban bueno, otros pero como esa mina es la mina antipersonal que le llaman uh -huh. esa mina solo afecta a una persona uh -huh. el que la machucó y si el otro iba bastante cerca lo deja ciego y yo voy caminando y cuando yo sentí el, el impacto pero yo le digo a los otros compañeros repliegan se riegan porque... ¿Sobrevivió el otro? Sí, porque yo creía pues de que a mí lo que me había pasado únicamente pues, yo creí que era... Yo no sabía pues de que era así que estaba. Pero cuando vine yo y todo acá ellos se regaron, yo lo que hice, me levanté. Pero cuando me quiero levantar ya, yo ya no la tengo del todo. Solo tengo dos huesotes así. Soy un ortopedista traumatólogo. 
and we've just been uh, looking at Antonio's leg. It uh, appears when he had a landmine accident, his injuries included uh, extremity-wise a uh, amputation below knee, traumatic amputation on the right side, and a severe, probably grade three open fracture of his tibia on the left. Now he has been fitted with a, a baloney prosthesis that um, I'm quite impressed with. They have a, a polypropylene socket, much like what we used to uh, in the States. But these, the supplies for this are in short supply. We've also seen some excellent demonstrations here of uh, friction knees that are homemade and uh, are comparable to the sorts of things we're using in the States, but independently made. So it's uh, com his, uh, his case represents a considerably uh, impressive uh, effort of the system to make him functionally normal and a tremendous uh, drive for him to rehabilitate himself in such a short period of time come from uh, an injury that would be permanently crippling in most instances to full independent ambulation. Above all else, please tell Mr. Reagan that the Nicaraguan people want peace, that we don't want to spill any more blood. <laughs> But the wounded lion will rise again, he makes a mighty roar. Brian's coming back, he's coming back for more. Can you sing that with me? Brian's coming back, he's coming back for more. Brian's coming back, he's coming back for more. Brian's coming back, he's coming back for more. Brian's coming back, he's coming back for more.